Hello everyone and welcome back to the class. Today in this series of circuit analysis, we will study Thevenin theorem. Sometimes we design a system to which we connect different types of load. Now if you see the example of power outlet at your home to which sometimes you connect electric iron or TV, washing machine or microwave oven or any other appliance. And now with changing the load, if you want to analyze the circuit, you will have to repeat the calculation whenever you change the load. The solution to this repeated calculation is Thevenin theorem, in which we divide the given circuit in two parts. First is fixed part and second is variable part to which we connect the load. By doing this, we don't have to repeat the calculations. As we have data for fixed part of the circuit, we will just add the value of load and will do the analysis. As discussed earlier that we will divide our circuit into two parts, one will be fixed and the another one will be variable depending on the load. The Thevenin theorem states that a linear two terminal circuit can be replaced by an equilibrium circuit which will consist of a voltage source known as Thevenin voltage will be in series with a resistor known as Thevenin resistance where Thevenin voltage is the open circuit voltage at the terminals and the Thevenin resistance RTH is the input resistance or equivalent resistance at the terminal when independent sources are turned off. Now if you look at the figure in part A, we have a circuit which consists of two parts, one is fixed and second one is load which we can vary. So we will transform this fixed part of the circuit into Thevenin equivalent which will consist of a voltage source and a resistor in series which will be known as Thevenin resistance as shown in the figure B. Now if we remove the load from the circuit, the voltage at terminal A to B will be VTH where the input resistance will be equal to R Thevenin when we will turn off the independent sources. A linear circuit with variable load can be replaced by a Thevenin equivalent exclusive of the load and the network behave exactly same as the original circuit. Now consider a circuit terminated by a load as shown in the figure A. The current through the load and the voltage across the load are easily determined once the Thevenin equivalent is obtained. Because the resultant circuit is in series form and we can apply simply voltage divider rule or we can use Ohm's law to determine current through the elements. Now we will study how to find Thevenin equivalent voltage VTH or Thevenin equivalent resistance RTH. Now to find VTH or RTH, we will use the concept of equivalent circuit. Now if you look at the figure, in figure A we have a circuit which consists of fixed part and variable part. Variable part is our load and the fixed part is linear two terminal circuit. In figure B we have transformed the fixed part into a Thevenin circuit which consists of VTH voltage and Thevenin resistance in series to the voltage source connected to the load at terminal A to B. Now to apply Thevenin theorem, we will use the concept of equivalent circuit. Now we will explore the conditions under which these two circuits will be equivalent. Now as a first step, we will remove the load from the system connected at terminals A to B and by this our circuit will be open circuit and no current will flow in both cases. So the open circuit voltage across the terminal in figure A must be equal to voltages across the terminals A to B in figure B. Now if we analyze the figure B, the open circuit will have the voltage of VTH and we are developing a relation for equivalent circuit. So in figure A, the open circuit terminals A to B will also have the voltage of VTH. Or if you look at the figure 2, the open circuit voltage must be equal to Thevenin voltage. 
now we will find r thevenin and for this we will again remove the load from the both circuits presented in figure 1 and we will turn off all the independent sources now the input resistance or equivalent resistance of a dead circuit at a terminals a to b in figure 1a must be equal to that in figure 1b because two circuits are equivalent now in figure 1b as voltage source is turned off so voltage source will be replaced by a short circuit and the load is disconnected so at terminals a to b we will have a resistance of rth which will act as an input resistance and both the circuits are equivalent so the input resistance in case of figure 1a must be equal to rth as shown in the figure 2 now further in finding thevenin resistance we have two cases case one is if the network consists of all the independent sources which means no dependent source is present in the circuit in this case we will turn off all the independent sources and the input resistance acting between the terminals from where load has been removed will be the thevenin resistance Now in this example for the circuit shown in the figure 1 you have to find thevenin equivalent circuit to the left of terminals A to B and then you have to find the current for load of 6 ohm, 16 ohms and 36 ohms. Now as a first step we will remove the load from the terminals A to B and we will find the thevenin voltage and the thevenin resistance. So for thevenin resistance we will turn off the independent sources. So by turning off a 32 volt voltage source will be replaced by a short circuit and the 2 ampere independent current source will be replaced by an open circuit and the resultant circuit is shown in the figure 2. Now using the series parallel combination form the 4 ohm resistor is in parallel with the 12 ohm resistor whose equivalent will give us a value of 3 ohm and this 3 ohm resistor will be in series to the 1 ohm resistor so the input resistance or the thevenin resistance at terminal A to B will be of 4 ohms. Now to find voltage across terminal A to B which will be the open circuit voltage or thevenin voltage we will use circuit analysis technique which we have studied earlier. Here we will use mesh analysis and for this first of all we will assign the mesh current of I1 and I2 to the both loops. And if you look at the circuit, there is an independent current source in the loop 2 whose current direction is opposite to the I2. So I2 will be equal to minus 2 amperes. And KVL equation for mesh 1 will be minus 32 plus 16 I1 minus 12 I2 equals 0. Now substituting the value of I2 and solving for I1, we will have a value of 0 0.5 amperes. As A to B terminals are open circuited so no current will be flowing through that and current source is in parallel with 12 ohm resistor. So VTH will be equal to voltage across the 12 ohm resistor and that will be equal to 12 into I1 minus I2 which will give us the value of 30 volts. Here we can also use a nodal analysis as no current is flowing through 1 ohm resistor so applying KCL at node VTH sum of currents entering the node will be 2 ampere plus 32 minus vth over 4 ohm will be equal to the sum of currents leaving which will be vth over 12 and solving this will give us again the value of 30 volts now fixed part of the circuit which will replace the thevenin equivalent circuit will consist of a thevenin voltage in series with a thevenin resistance connected in series to the load as shown in the figure. Now our calculations are easy because the given circuit is turned into simple series circuit and we can easily find the current which will be equal to voltage divided by total resistance of the circuit or VTH divided by 
sum of thevenin resistance and load resistance. Now if load resistance is of 6 ohm then current flowing will be equal to 3 ampere or if load resistance is of 16 ohm current will be of 1.5 amperes and if load resistance is of 36 ohms the current flowing will be of 0.75 amperes and this example was related to the case when we have independent sources present in the circuit. Now we will study the second case for finding Thevenin resistance when the given network have dependent sources. First of all we will remove the load and turn off the independent sources. Also note that the dependent sources are not turned off because they are controlled by circuit variables. Now to find Thevenin resistance at terminals A to B, we will add a voltage source at the terminals A to B and then we will find the current I0. And then using Ohm's law, we will find the terminal resistance which will be Thevenin resistance in this case will be equal to V0 over I0. Apart from voltage source, we can also insert a current source to determine Thevenin resistance. Then we will find the voltage across the current source and with the help of Ohm's law, we will find the Thevenin resistance. Either of the approach give us the same result. Here we have option to use any value of the voltage source V0 or current source I0. For example, we can use a voltage source of 1 volt or a current source of 1 ampere. Or we can use any source of unspecified value like V0 or I0. Now for the circuit given in the figure 1, you have to find Thevenin equivalent circuit which will consist of RTH and VTH. Here if you look at the circuit, the circuit consists of one independent current source of value 5 ampere and one voltage dependent voltage source of value 2Vx where Vx is the voltage across the 4 ohm resistor. Now to find the Thevenin resistance, we will set the independent source equal to 0 so the current source will be replaced by an open circuit and we will leave the dependent source alone. Now to find Thevenin resistance we have removed the independent current source and the resultant circuit is shown in the figure 2. Now due to the presence of dependent source we will excite the given network with a voltage source of value V0 connected to the terminals A to B. Now to make calculation easy, we are assuming that V0 is equal to 1 volt. And here we are interested current passing through the terminals A to B which is I0 because this will give us Thevenin resistance equals 1 over I0. Or alternatively, we can also add a current source to the terminal A to B and can determine Thevenin resistance with the help of Ohm's law using the relation V0 or I0. If current source is of 1 ampere, then the Thevenin resistance will be equal to V0 over 1. Now for the circuit given in the figure 2, we will use the mesh analysis to determine current I0 and will assign current to the each of the mesh like I1, I2 and I3. Now using KVL at mesh 1, we will have minus 2Vx plus 2 into I1 minus I2 equals 0 or Vx will be equal to I1 minus I2. Where Vx is the voltage across the 4 ohm resistor and that will be equal to minus 4 I2. So I1 will be equal to minus 3 I2. Now KVL equation for loop 2 will be 4 I2 plus 2 into I2 minus I1 plus 6 into I2 minus I3 equals 0 and for loop 3 it will be 6 into I3 minus I2 plus 2 I3 plus 1 equals 0. Solving these equations for the value of I1, I2 and I3, we will have I3 equal minus 1 over 6 ampere. As we are interesting in current I0 which is opposite in direction to that of I3, so I0 will be equal to minus I3 and will have a value of 1 over 6 amperes. So the Thevenin resistance will be equal to 1 over I0 equals 6 ohms. 
Now we will find the Thevenin voltage or open circuit voltage at terminals A to B as shown in the figure 2. Here again we will use mesh analysis and will assign the mesh currents of I1, I2 and I3. The mesh current I1 will be equal to 5 ampere because of the current source and for loop 2 the mesh equation will be 4 into I2 minus I1 plus 2 into I2 minus I3 plus 6I 2 equal to 0 or minus 4I1 plus 12I2 minus 2I3 equal 0. Mesh equation for loop 3 will be minus 2Vx plus 2 into I3 minus I2 equal 0. Here Vx will be equal to I3 minus I2. But Vx is also equal to 4 into I1 minus I2. Now comparing this equation we will have the value of I2 equal 10 over 3 amperes. Here we are interested in voltage across a 6 ohm resistor because no current is flowing through the 2 ohm resistor so the voltage across 6 ohm resistor will be our open circuit voltage. So VTH will be equal to 6I2 will give us a value of 20 volts. So for the given example the equivalent thevenin circuit is shown in the figure 3 which consists of a, a voltage source of 20 volt and a thevenin resistance of 6 ohms. And thanks for watching this video.